Hey, welcome back once again, all you Sec Plus preppers. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver, and every single day I ask you not one, but two questions for you to ponder and contemplate. Let's go ahead and jump right in it. All right, here comes question number one. Uh, you currently have an HTTP server that implements TLS in order to secure the communications between uh, you and your clients. Now, you've grown concerned that uh, the government may one day come in and compel you to turn over the private key, which would allow them to be able to decrypt any of the communications that have taken place and that they've gathered from time gone by. What you want to do is you want to find a solution that's going to allow you to uh, comply with the law, but not create a situation that's going to allow for the exposure of any data that somebody may have collected in the past. Um, how are you going to do that? Here's some answer choices. Go ahead and think about it. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play. Then we'll break it all down. All right, let's look at the choices. First choice says change the encryption from AES-128 to AES-256. No. Um, while that would certainly make the data more confidential when it was being transmitted back and forth between your web server and the clients, uh, if somebody were able to actually recover those keys, it doesn't matter if they're 128 or 256 bit keys, they've got the keys. Choice number two on the list says that you should change to a certificate signed by a certificate authority from a non-public public key infrastructure. Uh, no. In fact, all this is going to do is cause you more problems because if you use a PKI that isn't from somebody who's trusted on the internet, the people who come visit your website are just going to get certificate warnings and errors because they don't trust the signing authority. So, no, this is not going to help you make things more secure, and it wouldn't help uh, as far as the, the keys would be considered anyway. So, don't do that. Choice number three on the list says implement a private ephemeral key derivation mechanism. That sounds fancy, and it's absolutely the right answer. Ephemeral keys are temporary keys, keys that are meant to be used for a short period of time and then discarded. And you're going to do this in one of two ways. Either you're going to do um, RSA ephemeral keys or you're going to do Diffie-Hellman ephemeral keys. And more than likely, you're going to do Diffie-Hellman ephemeral keys. Uh, in fact, most web browsers go in and do this, or at the very least support it uh, in terms of going in and doing it. Now, um, the benefit to you of this uh, a technique is that the keys that are derived are going to be used for a very brief period of time and then simply discarded. So even if uh, somebody like law enforcement came and tried to compel you into turning over your private keys that were used for the encryption, you can turn over the private key that the server has um, if the law requires you to do so, but that's not going to help them be able to recover any of the data because all the key exchange stuff that was done was done with temporary keys that were used for a very brief period of time and then discarded. So um, e ephemeral keys is absolutely the way to do this. Uh, this all circles around the idea of what we call perfect forward secrecy or just uh, forward secrecy where we use keys that are, are dynamically generated and then subsequently discarded, and so there's no capacity to go and recover the data afterwards. All right, the other choices on the list, uh, use RC4 with SHA2 for hashing. Uh, no, that's not going to accomplish what you want to do. Uh, in fact, using RC4 would, by most measures, be considered a step backwards as far as the confidentiality algorithm that you're using, since the majority of modern web browsers use AES. And using SHA2, one of those algorithms that's in there, uh, that would be great as far as the hashing is concerned, but that still has nothing to do with providing you uh, security as far as uh, what the question's asking about. So, no, it's not going to benefit you at all. All right, and the very last choice on the list said to go in and implement transport mode IPsec rather than HTTPS for your web traffic. Uh, that could not be farther from the truth. Um, in fact, that would pretty much render you unable to communicate with people if everybody who was trying to connect to you just your random passers-by wanted to connect to your website and you needed them to negotiate IPsec in order to do that. Um, it just doesn't work out that way. That's why HTTPS is so popular is because it's so transparent and easy to do. And modern web browsers support it as do modern web servers. So not the solution that you're looking for. All right, here comes question number two today. You have decided to implement transport mode IPsec using the encapsulating security payload for clients that are in Virginia connecting to a server that is in Iowa. Given this list of statements right here, which of them is true given this particular situation? Go ahead and click pause. When you're ready, click play and we'll break it all down. All right, first choice says that the packets intercepted on the way are going to have a source and destination IP address matching the two endpoints of the tunnel or from the routers creating the tunnel. And that is not true. Uh, when you're doing transport mode IPsec, the original IP header is the original, is the header. Um, 
tunnel mode IPsec would encapsulate the entire packet and place it inside a brand new IP header that would be the two tunnel endpoints as far as source and destination. But this is transport mode IPsec, so the source and destination IP address in the header is actually going to be the original source, which is the client in the actual destination server. Choice number two, it says this setup or this configuration satisfies any data in transit uh, security requirements that you might have. This is absolutely correct. So if you have a need to secure your data while it is in transit from point A to point B, a transport mode IPsec connection is going to do that because it's going to secure the data, in this case using ESP, so you're going to have confidentiality as well as integrity for the entire journey uh, that, the, uh, that the data takes. Choice number three on the list says that the server will only need to terminate a single IPsec connection. This is inaccurate. When you're doing transport mode IPsec, that's going to be from each individual client to the respective server. So if you had 20 clients over in Virginia that were connecting to this server, that means there's going to be 20 separate transport mode IPsec connections. Um, so no, that's not the right answer. Next batter on the list says that uh, Non-IPsec capable nodes in Virginia will still benefit from this configuration or this setup, and that could not be farther from the truth. Transport mode IPsec requires the source node to be able to do IPsec. That's not a guarantee that all IPv4 capable nodes can. All IPv6 capable nodes uh, can, however. Um, so it is perfectly plausible, like in this situation, that you have a non-IPsec capable IPv4 node, and in that circumstance, they can't do transport mode IPsec. So they have no capacity, as far as IPsec is concerned, to be able to secure the data. And the very last item on the list says that the data will have both confidentiality as well as integrity. This is a true statement. ESP, the Encapsulating Security Payload, is most famously associated with the idea of using confidentiality mechanisms. You're encrypting the data, which it absolutely does. But ESP also includes data integrity mechanisms. You choose a hashing algorithm when you're going to set this up. Now, it's not 100% required all the time by all implementations of, of ESP, but the majority of them are going to go in and do that. So you, you get both confidentiality and integrity when you're doing uh, the encapsulating security payload. Uh, keep in mind that just authentication headers would only give you the uh, data integrity mechanism, but in this case, because you're using ESP, you're getting confidentiality and integrity. All right, there you have it. Two more questions down. First question today was on implementing HTTPS um, TLS in such a way as to make sure that the government's not going to be able to come in someday and take your private keys and be able to decrypt all the data that they've been capturing for months and months on end. And the second question was on some of the general characteristics associated with transform mode IPsec VPNs. Hope you dug these. Hope they help you with your studies. Hope you're getting ready for that exam and it's getting close for you. Uh, if you want to get these questions every single day, make sure you click on the subscribe button. And if you like these questions, make sure you click on like. I'll be back tomorrow. Peace.